Squash Excel Pro is an elite team that work hard to train, play and run squash events on our journey to climb the world rankings. Like, subscribe, comment, pick up some of our merch on Teespring. Well, we're welcome in now for this, the second men's semi-final. Of course, already we have had uh, Temwa Chalisi winning over Sean Wigan. And uh, this is the second match of the day for these players. Uh, one player who was involved earlier in the uh, day and uh, had a war wound during the match, but it seems to have healed okay is uh, Damon McMillan. And uh, Damon, uh, come on in. And, um, hey, how are you? Good, good to have you, and uh, good to have you over the last several weeks, actually. How many weeks have you been in New Zealand playing? Um, yeah, like four or five, probably, I think, now. Yeah, maybe like five yeah, by the time you, I go back, but yeah. You, you played in uh, Hanmuir, Auckland Open. Was it Browns Bay you played there as well, I think? In yeah, Auckland? I played the satellite there, yeah. Yeah, and uh, then here. So you've, you've done pretty well getting around and uh, having a few matches, particularly yeah. when Australia was struggling to have matches for a while. Um, yeah, I guess there just wasn't tournaments in Australia, but um, I just yeah, like the idea of getting overseas and playing some playing some comps. Getting on a plane yeah, again, wasn't yeah, it? Oh no, yeah, I can travel somewhere. It was pretty weird, yeah, like just having no one, no one at the airport and stuff when I left, but yeah, no, it's been good. Actually feels like a while ago that I left. But, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, your mate, uh, Benjamin, he um, struggled to get home for a while. Are, are you from Melbourne oh, yeah. as well? Or? Yeah, I'm from Melbourne as well, so um, or living there anyway, but um, yeah, like I think it was all just a bit weird, like the whole lockdown thing, that neither of us want to go back to straight into a lockdown, obviously. But, um, yeah, no. It's, I mean, it's so weird, but. when do you go home, as in Melbourne next then? When's your um, flights? Well, so I'm leaving New Zealand on Tuesday, but going straight to Sydney for Australian Nationals. Right, yep. Um, and play that one, and then just pretty much at the end of that tournament, I'll head back to Melbourne, fingers crossed. It's all, um, it's all ready to go. But yeah, I don't know. It's um, strange, isn't it? To yeah. be a professional sportsman, a sports person, and you you kind of can't. And, and you, you can, I mean, like these guys have played about eight tournaments. Yeah. Because that's all that's really open to them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, I mean, I don't know, it's just changed the whole tour. Like, yeah. Well, for New Zealand, uh, the top player, Paul Cole, number four in the world, he just yeah. seems to go to Egypt all the time. I mean, must yeah. hate that place. I mean, it's, yeah. I know he appreciates that, you know, he's getting I tournaments. I'd love to go to Egypt, though. <laughs> well, I think uh, the, the top eight tournament that he's playing in later on this month is yeah, probably his yeah. fourth time that he's been to Egypt this year or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. I something know, ridiculous. Like, I mean, the only place that torn us together, really. But, and COVID side. Yeah, it's after still a while. like a thing there, I think, as well, yeah. so I don't even get why. <laughs> it's not I mean, playing the Egyptians who are so good in Egypt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that know, just yeah. makes it worse, doesn't it? Makes it makes pretty tough, but he yeah. had a pretty good run, I guess, at the last time. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, for you, where does squash sit in your, in your life? I mean, you're ranked about 330 in the world at the moment. And, yeah. Uh, how old are you? Um, 23. Okay, yeah. so where does it sort of sit? What is it? Oh, I just, um, I don't know. So I finished uni, so I'm pretty much just going full time at squash and giving it the right. best crack I can until, like, I don't know, until I either get sick of it or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I just trained full time back in Melbourne and have a like, casual job and um, yeah, just enjoy playing the tour really. So I think. For now, that's like that's what I got. But yeah. Right. Well, that, that's a good way to live. I mean, you, if you're able to do that, that's that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, it's just a pretty fun lifestyle that not everyone so, gets to have. So yeah. So what what have you been studying? Is there anything in particular, or anything in particular you want to study? Um. Yeah. So I did a, a, just like a bachelor of commerce. Um, <laughs> it's like the, what we call the BA here, the bugger all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't really haven't found too much use for it just yet. But, um, Not on the squash court. <laughs> Maybe with your finances that you get. You know? Yeah, um, well, how, how do you think I fund myself on the tour? Yeah, so, exactly. It's a degree right now. But oh, um, that is the other thing. I mean, how do you... I mean, okay, it's not overly expensive coming here, but I mean, how do you finance... Squash. Oh, I have a job um, at Tennis Warehouse, if you right. know, just like supply yeah. tennis stuff, so just string rackets for them and uh, do a bit of coaching back in Melbourne as well. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I think... Yeah. It's worked so far, yeah, we'll I carry just, on. I pretty much just work enough to like pay the bills and um, yeah. 
And for you, uh, what's your club in Melbourne? Do you have a club that you play for? Um, yes, I play for Grace Park Hawthorne Club. Right, okay. Um, so, yeah, they just help me out with all my uh, training expenses, which is like a massive, massive thing for me. So, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, that's, that's yeah. It's good in, uh, is it strong in Melbourne at the moment? I, mean, I know a lot of squash has shifted to the Gold Coast, to Carrara, uh, after the Commonwealth Games, so a lot of people train there, but is there still competitive squash in Melbourne? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, so like Rex is still based in Melbourne, and Rex is, I don't know, yeah. arguably probably the best player in Australia. Um, then, oh God, I don't know what's happened here. Yeah, just uh, seeing that we've got it 7 2, so there's a decent lead there. I, I don't know if you saw the. Wills Donnelly and his comeback in the fifth against Elijah was down. Yeah, yeah I was zero seven. Up. I was warming up during it, just like seven love. Yeah, just slowly creeping up. It was pretty impressive. Um, I don't know. I think I back him to have a good run against Lomba today. I think um, like Lomba played well I thought, against me anyway. Or he beat right. him. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think really great Will as a player. So. Well, he seems to play better when he's down. And there's a couple of other players. You know, you think. <laughs> I know you've got to get your A into G, but you know, playing better when you're down is it's a little bit unsafe, you know? Yeah, I don't know if it's still, I guess like you have that um, risk free mentality, like almost just like once you've surrendered a match and then you sort of just play really well after that um, because you're down. But um, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those strange things for some players. Uh, it's almost yeah. like. I mean, it's like you get the opposite as well with confidence players. Yeah. Like, who just, play really well when they're up and then as soon as they're down fall to pieces but um. well there's uh, a few players coming across for the Australian Open uh, I know that uh, Louis uh, the Wumba here oh, and yeah. uh, Tim are coming across and I think yeah. also Mason Smales and I'm sure you've seen Big yeah, Mace over there I think Anthony Leffer as well um, and yeah, yeah. so that, that's good and Caitla Watts and uh, it'll be interesting because your best Aussies a bit tight there your best Aussie men came across and that little bit of rivalry was a bit of fun, wasn't it? It was a bit of fun. Um, yeah. yeah. I think we got shown up a little bit in those, in those quarters. But, um, oh, that's, oh that's great shot. shot. Yeah, but, um, yeah it, was, it was just that the, I think it was Tim and uh, Joel had a couple of great comebacks or a couple of great battles. Uh, yeah, and, uh, a bit of a, yeah, very... But that makes it very fun. intense match, I think, yeah. that Joel, Joe one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was loving it, just like sitting in the crowd, but... Um, I think that makes it fun though when the Kiwis go over to Australia because yeah. it's, it's going to be that, um, you know, that, hey, you got us in your country, we're going to try and get you here. Yeah, we'll have the chip on our shoulder for once. Yeah, so, yeah. I think, no, nah, that'll be really good. I'm looking forward to the tournament. I think. And I think just certainly one thing about the, oh, nice shot. Oh, great recovery though. Gee, wheels can move, can't he? Yeah. Too, I guess. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a nice one though. Holds it very well and just guides that one across court there, the one. He's got all sorts of shots. Sometimes he just tries to do, he knows he can do anything, doesn't he? Yeah, very poised from, from those positions. Yeah, just with the Auckland Open being uh, the tournament that a lot of Australians came across to, it was great the um, day before or just before the match started that everybody was chatting. You know, all the Australians were chatting with the Kiwis. Everybody oh, yeah. was just, you know, catching yes. up. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. But th that's one of the things that uh, COVID has taken away from a lot of sports is yeah. the social, yeah, on the court, be competitive as, as you want, but the social atmosphere of catching up with people from different countries. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely. Um, I know that, yeah, just, I think, I don't know, like, part of the reason I came to New Zealand, I guess, yeah, just yeah. Um, talk again with new people, like, play new people, of course, but yeah. yeah. Just, um, Otherwise, yeah, some old rivalries, yeah, some so old yeah. friends, and as yeah, well. It's really, I mean, I think even even seeing some of the Australian guys as well, still though, like yeah. we haven't travelled that much, I guess, within Australia. There hasn't been as many tournaments, so. Oh, oh. And a letter on that one. It was, he was, Will Stanley was hoping or looking for a stroke. I don't think the stroke was on. What do you uh, think? Yeah, I would have just played the letter as well. Do you? Oh. Now, do you like um, umpiring riffing yourself? Because oh, some shit. players hate it. <laughs> I don't mind too much, eh? Like, and I reckon... Oh, change the direction. I should recover, though. Oh. Look, look at the way that Tindalwam is just dominating these points, but can't put it away. Oh, on the bodies. Oh, well, gets it on that one, though. 
So 11-5 the first and well, we're back now for the second game and uh, Luamba Chalisi yeah, had a little bit of a battle there against uh, Wills Donnelly and uh, Damon McMillan, we're just waiting for the call. There you go, and a stroke on that one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go, you, you predicted that one. So with me is uh, Australian player Damon McMillan who has been in New Zealand for about four or five weeks and played a lot of tournaments and have played against a lot of uh, different opponents. And uh, Damon, is there one player that you played against you thought, I really don't like playing this guy? And, and not in a personality, but in the way that they played, you're like, this, guy, this guy's good. And Yeah, I guess like playing Chris Van der Sam at Auckland, I found pretty tough. Yeah. I don't know, I, I just wouldn't. Well, he was ranked about 150 in the I world mean, yeah, at one stage. Really you know, now now he's down, down, but he's working full time and yeah, a couple of jobs. Yeah, his game style in general. Quite a, a quite a big guy on the court as well. Yeah, I mean, you're not exactly small, to volley, but volley everything. Yeah, um, yeah, I hate playing really tall players. So, <laughs> I don't know, like. Well, this it's interesting uh, when you look at the size and stature of some of the players. I mean, Sean Wigan, the you know, guy who runs a lot. You've got uh, Wills here, not overly tall. Yeah, uh, the one was uh, probably about six foot one or something. Yeah. Great rally. Great rally yeah. <laughs> Was that a time shot? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just slowing down the pace. Yeah, there's this shot. Yeah. Well, it, you know, when you take it on the full like that, he just took away any time for yeah. Wills to recover, and it was a good shot. It's just when the one was dangerous, really, like across the tee. Starts bowling so well. Yeah, I think that has to be one of the the shots of the modern game as the volley has become more and more important. Would you would you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, pretty much. I guess like as a general rule, like taking the ball early is going to be the one winning the match. So yeah, um, and yeah, I think Wills does it pretty well. I guess he doesn't have yeah the same height that the ball has. So. Oh, shit. And for you, do you watch much PSA squash, or is it just like, oh, no, I just go and play? <laughs> no, I don't really <laughs> it's funny that some players do watch a lot, and others like, no, not really. I don't, um, I don't see it as much as some, some <laughs> yeah. people too, but I, I do do watch like a well, the, amount, I guess. Yeah. The other thing is that, you know, not not in a gloating sort of way, but Australia is uh, struggling a little bit, but uh, particularly in the men. The women, there's yeah, a couple, on. but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's, I guess, true. I, yeah. I mean, since oh, was it David Palmer well, and we um, those sort of guys? Like, yeah, definitely lost our way a little bit. But I mean, fingers crossed it comes back. Not too, I mean, not too near, like not too distant future. But. I mean, you've got a few female players. Uh, a little bit of depth there. Yeah, yeah, definitely high ranked. And, um, The, one of the things with Luamba's play is that sometimes he gets caught up in a rally against a player. If they're hitting a certain way, he'll get caught up in that same way, whether it's a slow or a fast shot. And that's yeah. one of the things that, I because he can do anything. In general, yeah, he plays a pretty hard, like, fast pace. So I think it's probably better when he sticks to that. But I don't think and I think for someone like him, he got stuck in the UK last year and couldn't play any more tournaments. Well, that's the thing where these tournaments have been so big for him and um, the national champs coming up here just like Australia has in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was runner-up in five games to Evan Williams uh, <laughs> last year yeah. and that was a pretty dramatic match. It was a great match. Yeah. And uh, be, I think he'll be pretty eager to... Yeah, it'll be the second seed again with Evan up the top and yeah. not sure how the seedings go as to whether Luwambu will is predicted to face his brother in one semi or whether it's uh yeah, it's gonna be randomized yeah either either way it's when he plays his brother it's a real interesting contest it's quite often ten while that gets the advantage although uh, it depends <laughs> you know, they're so yeah, close I mean, well, is playing pretty well at the moment as well yeah but obviously always one open to open so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
How have you found the courts here? The, was the, the ball wasn't too bad uh, when you played. It was earlier in the day. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine, I thought. I actually quite like this court. Um, like, I don't know. Um, in fact, actually, all the centres I've really played at, probably. Oh. And what about, um, I think it was, was it Pam Muir, who was a bit strange say, with that glass um, front? Yeah, definitely a bit of a weird court. Like, came off really quick on the front wall. Um, but yeah, just had the concrete side walls. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was kind of a bit strange, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Just guided that boast, didn't he? Yeah. Cracking it. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> that, that is part of Luamba's game, that he just... just can't get away from just... Yeah, it's just building. Stonking the ball as hard as he can. that's the uh, issue with his game sometimes just the patience goes where did he need to hit that shot quite like that yeah I mean yeah, everybody has that issue yeah. I'm sure but and, and Wills will just hang around yeah got a good lift on him nice as it was he really yeah. does have a good lift and a good lob uh, the unfortunate problem is something like that happens but what he's able to do is just give it that extra air that yeah. gets him back in position just smooth smooth movement really as well a couple of turns that have uh, put him on the back foot now. And just got to bring his head up. He doesn't want to drop his shoulders too much, does Wills. Every now and then he does put his head down a bit. Yeah, I haven't watched him enough to know, to be honest. I think I only see him when he's playing well. Oh, yeah, and then go from, from two tens to that shot. And is the, the tin and the tournaments that you've played, there's different levels of it. Uh, yeah, I think they were all... 17. Brown's Bay was 17. That right. would have just been 19. <laughs> oh. Surely oh. <laughs> I was thinking, gee, if he got that back, yeah. <laughs> that's decent. Because um, yeah. the other thing is, from being ground level to this level, sometimes catching up on the, you know, a ball not up or anything like that, or a let, it can be quite different, can't it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. See it better on court, I reckon. Um, so, so here we go. The, yeah, he's, he's just. I almost feel like Will needs this game. One of those frustrating players, Will's so going there. Oh. So that's three tens in the last uh, four or five points. Yeah, just the crucial stages. Feel for him. <laughs> <laughs> and so the game ball here for Luwama Chalisi to face his brother if he can win this match, that is. And it'll be the second time that they would have played in a PSA Challenger tournament. The first one was in Morrinsville, Challenger tournament there. That could have been a letter or potential. So in the end, that is 11-8, the second game, and uh, two games to love now for Luamba Chalisi. Uh, we already have Luamba Chalisi back on court, getting ready for this the third. Very aware of how Wills Donnelly can uh, stage comebacks. I haven't heard from uh, anyone out of uh, Central or out of Taupo Club or Surf City of late. I'm sure you're watching somewhere. Feel free to come on through and uh, maybe give your thoughts on the match. 
Uh, let's see if Will Donnelly can do another comeback like he did from Love 7 down against Elijah Thomas in the fifth game that was in the quarterfinals. Thanks from uh, thanks for Damon yeah. McMillan. Oh, nice shot. Helping us out for the first couple of games there, learning a bit about squash out of Australia. Nice. And a couple of good shots there for Lawamba Chalisi. Quite a assertive on them. Got himself into a good position, punching the ball away. volley and the backhand volley successful there for Lawamba Chalisi takes the three love lead Just look at each other there on the court. Chicken on the call. And a few people hanging around here for this semi final. Some of them in the lounge watching a bit of rugby and squash at the same time. Others around the court. Just a little bit of a shuffle to get out of the way of that serve. Yeah, nice. Taking the forehand on the full and playing it straight and hard. Takes the 4-2 advantage. in the uh, forehand corner. It's a nice shot. <laughs> the one Mitchell Easy ready to go. Will's Donnelly still figuring out which side. Another good shot. He's uh, certainly hit form in this, the third game. Of course, the first two, 11-5, 11-8. In. And he's going to have to do one of those big comebacks again if he's going to uh, put a bit of pressure back on Luwamba Chalisi in this one. Oh. Yeah, went forward expecting the drop and instead it was uh, well lifted. Nice play from Luwamba Chalisi. Now the 8-2 lead. Well, let's have a look for that comeback, Wills. Well, there's one point. Still a long way to the go, though.
And when you have a decent lead like that, give them away a couple of points. And this is where Lawamba knows he just wants to get it done quickly. He's got to come back if he wins this and play his brother. And there's a three. <laughs> is this going to be the Wu's Donnelly special? Just, just skip that one off his feet right at the back of the court to Lawamba. That's a bit of shot. All right, that stops the rot. And uh, now 9-5. It had been previously three points in a row for Wills Donnelly. And uh, Lawamba Chalisi coming back a little bit now. Only a height there. left on that one. It's always going to be tight to the 10. So one back. the Iran. I think this time Wills Donnelly knows that any comeback here is going to be almost too tough. And we have the match ball for the Wamba Chalisi to go through and play his brother for the second PSA final this year that they would have faced off against each other. And yeah. there we go. That is a nice shot to finish with. That is 11-6 in the third. So 11-5, 11-8, 11-6. Lawamba Chalisi will now go through to the final to play his brother from 3 p.m. tomorrow.